What prompted you to write this book after all these years? Uh, well, it's not really. It's not, not really after all these years. I started it in uh, 2002, really. Okay. You know? um, and that actually, you know, uh, is is something, is, is a point I, I should try and get across to some people who are... Uh, who write some reviews who keep saying, you know, uh, so I guess sort of attacking me <laughs> for writing a book after everyone uh, that, I, that I waited till I, uh, the, all three of the, the, those guys died mm-hmm. to put to put this book out. Um, I started writing in 2002. Dee Dee was still alive, and Johnny was still alive. Now, if these people are like going to blame me for DDODing and for Johnny getting cancer and passing away, you know, those were things that were out of my control. Were you still tight with them at this point? Um, well, no, not really. Um, with Didi, Didi was actually, uh, he was touring in Europe and I hadn't really had that much contact with him, though. He was living in California. I was okay. here in uh, New York, you know, um, but you know, it's not like I, it's not like I just put this book out now, and it's not like I put it. I started working on it after these guys died, and said, "Ah, now nobody's here to uh, you know to say anything." I, I couldn't help it that these guys passed away. You know what I mean? I, I mean, absolutely. So you, you get you get my point. Oh no, I, I absolutely do. Have, uh, has uh, Tommy said anything about it? Or? Tommy, I read. I had Tommy read it. Like you know, I don't know, probably about uh, 2006, 2007, when I had a. A rough draft that was like about seven hundred and something pages, and I had him read it just to make sure that um, that he approved of everything, and it was you know to his recollection. And uh, because I I didn't want somebody coming out after the thing was out saying, hey, this is not true, this is not true, you know. Right. So I made sure Tommy read it and uh, and got his okay. So he had read it back in like two thousand seven. Okay. But a rough draft. I mean, but there's nothing in there that got added. Things just got kind of cut out, you know, or condensed. Gotcha. So now what about, um, cause, uh, you know, uh, CJ replaced Dee Dee, you know, Richie replaced Tommy, and then Marky replaced, Tom, you know, Richie. Um, well, well, you kind of got that all the way around. Right? I, I, oh, I, I don't, don't, don't want to be right. picky with you. <laughs> right, I got that the other Marky way. replaced Tommy, Tommy Richie and, replaced Marky, know. then Marky replaced Richie again. And, That's yeah. what it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> the, know. Uh, it's, it's the confusion confusing. of the uh, of the lineup, You're the drummers right. at least. Right. Uh, because overall, Tommy replaced Joey. Um, but uh, did did any of the, the other the supporting acts of uh, the fill-ins, if you would call, because it's not the original lineup yet. Did any of those guys have any involvement in it whatsoever? In this book? In the book. Um, Richie did. Right. If that's what you mean. Um, or CJ? Yes. No, he CJ had no involvement. Okay. Um, I, you know, it's kind of uh, not that his role was inconsequential, but it, it, in in the, in the storyline, it kind of was. It makes sense. You yeah. know, I, I, I understand. So. And now, I mean, he, he he's in there, you know, because actually uh, um, I was in, uh, indirectly responsible for getting him the audition. Right. As you might have gotten to that part, I don't know, in the book. Okay. Um, a friend, you know, when when Didi quit, um, my uh, my brother and Monty came to see my band. Uh, I had this band called uh, Crown the Good. We were playing at CBGBs. My brother had actually just gotten a, a development deal with Epic. They came in. What's wrong, man? You look like something's wrong. And he said, "Well, Dee Dee quit." Oh wow! And he said, "You didn't know any bass players." And the bass player in my band was friendly with CJ, and he said, "I think I got somebody." I said, "I think Wes knows somebody," and he did. And it was CJ, and that's how CJ got the audition. It was via my bass player. Gotcha. So it was a big network then. Is yeah. Much what it came down to. Right. So as you're writing the book, you uh, you recruited Reg- Legs McNeil to aid you in your writing. Um, how did that relationship come about? Um, my relationship with Legs, or yeah. well, you know, uh, of all of all the writers to assist you in, in the writing process, Legs was you know was the one that wrote it with you or helped you or guided you, I should say, in uh, in the writing process. He, he didn't really. Well, you know, the thing is, um, I, I had written uh, a lot of magazine articles. I had uh, written for Time Out New York. I had written for Audio Review. I had started my own mag. Uh, I started a magazine for the Rock Club, Coney Island High. Right. Which I had created, edited the, the whole thing. You know, uh, it was called the Coney Island High Times. 
and I had also been writing a, a column in a, a Lower East Side based paper called the New York Waste since 1966. So, uh, 1996. Sorry. So I had been writing, but uh, the agent I had said, you know, if, uh, you want me to shop uh, this to, and I had already written a chapter summary and a sample chapter myself. But oh, they said, okay. um, they said if you, you you've never written a book before, and so if you want us to shop you to uh, the major, major publishing houses, you're going to have to have a co-writer because we're not gotcha. going to be able to get you a, a, a deal unless you have a, somebody work a co-writer who's written a book before. Of course, this guy wanted me to work with people that he represented already, because then he would get the commission, you know. Of course. But I kind of said that uh, I'd rather do it with somebody I know, and um, I chose to do it with Legs, because I did want to have some some quotes in there, and also Legs is, had been a friend of mine and my brothers. Uh, they were, like, very close friends since 1976. So I've known Legs for, I don't know, like, what, 33 years now. When we started it, I'd known him for like 30, 30 years. Anyway, a long time. And he had some similar dealings with the, with my brother. There were certain certain things in the in his relationship that paralleled mine. Certain uh, falling out, fallings out with with Joey, or when uh, he, you know Joey would get a little paranoid, or the, he thought Legs had slept with his one, uh, some girl that he would had gone out with, and then he was cast out of Joey's uh, circle there. Oh, know? wow. I didn't realize that. No, I... uh, you didn't get to that part yet. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I'm, you know? uh, yeah I'm still... Because uh, the thing is, you know, I, I was introduced to Legs when I read the book Please Kill Me. He had mm. written that. Right. And Joey's all over that. You know, some of Joey's stories are just fucking nuts, you know, mm -hmm. in that right. book. And I'm like, oh, and when I saw that he was writing uh, or was attached to... Uh, I slept with Joey Ramon with you. Right. You know, I was putting two and two together. But this is an interesting uh, light that you're shedding on it because I didn't realize that that was the case. The, yeah, that was it. So you know, I kind of wanted somebody that I, you know, I wouldn't that knew had what had been going on and knew you know that uh, had similar ups and downs with with the person as I did, so that I wouldn't have to kind of explain it to them. Of course. You know? But it kind of. Uh, it backfired on me a little bit because Legs had his own idea of how he wanted thought this book should be, and, and he was coming from this world of doing these oral histories, right. and, and that's how he uh, perceived this book should be. And I totally did not want that, and neither did Simon and Schuster. So we had a big blowout, and, um, ob and you know, obviously, uh, I, I prevailed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. I mean, it is your story. It's you and your brother. And I wanted to write it. I mean, I, you know, I have my own style of writing. I think that's what Legs' problem was, that, you know, he, he it became, it might become apparent to the reader that this is not a, uh, a Legs McNeil-style book. 